live from the Canadian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines comes to you compliments. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. When you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. This is Network News for Thursday, February 2, 2023. In the headlines, Chad David and Cyril Joseph sentenced to 19 years behind bars. Michael McQueen trial delayed in the Franklin St. Paul murder trial. DPP seeks Privy Council leave to appeal Alexander Clark's case. Government attempts to cushion the effects of high fuel prices with new changes in charges for electricity. In around the globe regionally, plans advance for performing arts center in Antigua. Internationally, African-American studies syllabus changed at a high school in the United States. Plus in the sports news, Canadian Ryan John captures maiden five wicket haul. Good evening, I'm Ken Roy Batiste here at Television Centre at the Grenada Broadcasting Network. Stay with us, we'll be back after this. The first segment of the news comes to you compliments. Soft weave, bathroom tissue. Have you heard about the new soft weave bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. Thanks for joining us. Found guilty of the offense of non-capital murder, Chad David was sentenced on Thursday to 19 years behind bars. Christina John reports. Chad David's murder trial was among the list of matters starting off the January assizes. David received a 19-year sentence on Thursday following two previous adjournments. He appeared before High Court Judge Justice Paula Guilford on Thursday to hear his fate. Prior to Thursday's sentencing, David had already served four years on remand. On December 2, 2022, a 12-member jury returned an undisputed verdict, guilty of non-capital murder. David, who was 17 years at the time, was charged in connection with a fatal trapping incident in November 2019 that resulted in the death of his 34-year-old cousin Marvin Francis of Duquesne, St. Mark. David reportedly inflicted several chop wounds, including one to Francis's neck, following an altercation over an undisclosed sum of money. The murder victim's hands were reportedly almost severed, and his head was almost completely decapitated. He also suffered other serious injuries. Chrislina John, GBN News. 
while in a separate sentence in handed down this morning, St. David's resident Cyril Joseph was ordered to spend the next 19 years and six months of his life behind prison bars. He was convicted last November of nine counts of sexual misconduct. The sentence was handed down to the 63-year-old man by High Court Judge Justice Paula Guilford at the number one High Court in St. George. The sentence comes approximately two months after Joseph was found guilty by a nine-member jury of five accounts of indecent assault, one count of sexual assault, one count of sexual intercourse with a minor, and two counts of indecent assault against the second victim. So Joseph was initially charged with 17 charges of sexual offenses in connection with allegations brought against him by two underage girls. The incidents reportedly occurred between 2012 and 2019. Now, the former security guard who has maintained his innocence from the onset of the sexual-related charges was represented in court by attorney at law, George Prime, who explained that it is too early to say whether there are grounds to file an appeal in the matter. I am not clear at this time as to the precise role we would play because I need to discuss with my client. I don't just appeal for the sake of appealing. Appeal based on grounds. And when you appeal, you appeal against not facts, you appeal against points of law. Where I sit, I have not yet gauged that there are any missteps or points of law that may have arisen in the case. But when I read the judgment, mm -hmm and the findings, I may well decide that there are good grounds upon which an appeal can be lodged. About 60 to 70 percent of the 119 matters on the January Assizes list are of a sexual nature. Attorney at Law Prime explained the difficulty with these types of matters involving children. They, 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 they're always in child cases of this kind. You, you, you are able to be extremely cautious. And so over the years, courts of law, criminal practice in particular, have devised certain means and safeguards to stop what they call miscarriage of justice. So that, for example, to go and convict on the evidence of one complainant alone without corroborating evidence. And by corroborating evidence, I mean evidence other than coming from the complainant herself. That is the type of support. In other words, courts like supporting evidence. In this case, there were none. A defense attorney is adamant that his client is innocent. However, prosecutors believe they have the right man. Odette Campbell has an update on the court case, which was triggered by the death of an elderly citizen following a violent incident. A 12-member jury was impaneled for the murder trial involving Michael McQueen. It was set for Thursday, but was put off for yet another time. Michael McQueen is on trial for non-capital murder. He was charged in connection with the death of 83-year-old Franklin St. Paul, the brother of a former High Court judge. The case is being heard by Justice Victoria Charles Clark at the St. George's No. 2 High Court. The court was unable to proceed with taking evidence when the matter was called on Wednesday due to the unavoidable absence of the prosecutor. The accused man was apprehended by law enforcement officers in February of 2018. St. Paul reportedly died at the General Hospital several months after a violent incident that occurred at his home at Belmont St. George in October of 2017. Mr. McQueen was arrested as the main suspect in the death of the elderly man. However, he maintains his innocence. He has been represented by attorney Jerry Edwin, who has outlined plans to call at least two witnesses to support his client's defense when the matter resumes. For GBN News, I'm Odette Campbell. Alexander Clark could see himself back in the courthouse once again. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is seeking leave to appeal to the Privy Council against a Court of Appeal ruling. Director of Public Prosecutions Christopher Nelson spoke with my colleague Nisha Paul on the decision. 
the application for leave to appeal the Privy Council against the Alexander Clark Court of Appeal ruling was filed by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution on December 15. Attorney Anselm Clowden represented Alexander Clark in the now nine-year-old matter, which had sent shockwaves throughout the country. He provided an update on the status of the case. The solicitors in England that would have responded to the application for leave, I don't know if they were successful. All of this has been done under the cloak of secrecy. But I received some communications from a firm of solicitors in England. Mr. Clark ha has instructed them to proceed as respondent to the application. I haven't heard anything since. Clowden says there is doubt as to whether there is any merit in the appeal. I looked at the, some of the documents they were saying that counsel would have had notes and uh, certain things, but uh, that's, that, that wouldn't help them because there's no recording of the proceedings. And uh, sections five of the Constitution makes it mandatory that every accused person must be facilitated with a copy of the record of proceedings where he has appealed. And that was a ground upon which we, we appealed and argued strenuously. Due to the missing transcripts, the Court of Appeal ruled that the conviction and the sentence be squashed and a verdict of acquittal entered or that the applicant's sentence is commuted to manslaughter and the sentence reduced to time served. Attorney Clowden is not of the view that the Privy Council will interfere in the decision of the Court of Appeal. It is very far-fetched because, you see, it involves findings of both fact and law. And uh, the Court of Appeal, our Court of Appeal, the, the Supreme Court of Canada, and the Privy Council have said that they would not lightly interfere with the exercise of a judge's discretion. In this case, it was a unanimous decision to stay. There was no dissent. So they would not likely interfere with such findings because the court here is, is more equipped to deal with all the social and community and legal. And they heard submissions and came to a unanimous decision. So I, I think this is just for public consumption. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecution now awaits the fixing of a date for the hearing of the application. If and when a leave to appeal is granted by the Privy Council, then an appeal will be filed. Clark was sentenced to 67 years in prison for the June 17, 2014 death of his wife and the mother of his daughter, Nixian Downs Clark of Duquesne St. Mark. The 27-year-old mother died of blunt force trauma and asphyxiation by strangulation. Clark had led police investigators to the shallow grave at Mount Moritz St. George, where he had buried the body of his wife, which was recovered from inside a black suitcase. For GBN News, I am Nisha Paul. This is Network News. Still ahead from us, government announces changes in charges for electricity effective February 1, 2023. Stay with us. Yes, good day, it's boy Graphics, and I'm fully endorsed in 473 Colors Boat Train. It's happening this Saturday aboard the Rum Renner 2. You know the code, get your ticket $65, barbecue included. The board in 7, we sell in 8 o'clock. Graphics and the full team gonna be on the boat, and we outside this Saturday. Don't miss it. Wrap your color, bring out your family, bring out your friends. Still in the ICs, Rum Renner 2, look out. We're coming up 98 to the world. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options.
options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. You ate well, drank and indulged, laughed and had so much fun for the festive season. But now it's time. It's time for some serious detox business at Nirvana Detox Center and Natural Health Store. Start the year right with your health as a priority. Cleanse and flush your blood, liver and kidneys with quality herbs and supplements. Purchase one of our detox combo packs starting from $100. Purchase a full body detox pack starting from $500. Get 10% off on colonic irrigation. Get a chance to win a free colonic irrigation treatment and product coupons with every purchase. We are located in Grandin's, minutes before the Food Fair Shopping Center, immediately opposite the Old Capital Bank building in the Regency Commercial Suites. Give us a call at 231-6642 or 418-7115 or visit nirvana.gd for more info. It's time for some serious detox business at Nirvana Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We know real body care. This offer is is valid until March 31st, 2023. Terms and conditions apply. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. Your boy DJ Ice, and you see this weekend here, yeah, this Saturday, we get getting ready for the 473 Colors boat ride. Yeah, the whole Hot 98 team is gonna be on the inside on the boat ride. So, you gotta get your tickets now. Saturday, 473 Colors boat ride. Tickets only $65. Get them now. The whole team on the inside. We on the rum runner too. The whole Hot team, 473 Colors boat ride. Get the tickets now, man. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smiles. And the way you tell me, it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible. It's okay to look back if I am scared. I know you're there. Ooh. Arise, uh. Together there's no limit to what we can do. This is Ariza. Your financial freedom. Your future. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture. Nation building and our future. So go out and play, folks. Make it a must. You will see what the National Lottery is doing for us. When you play pick three cash flow and play with. Start in September 30th, Monday to Friday. These three games will be drawn mid morning, 9 45 a.m., midday, 12 45 p.m., and evenings, 7 45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday, Monday, 
celebrate 49 years of independence with LA Pressel when you shop at our stores. Save big on lumber, hardware, and furniture when you shop from January 26th to February 6th. Visit our stores today and check out our specially marked items. Price to go. Don't miss out on this independent sale. 49 years never felt so good at your favorite LA. Shop today and save the LA way. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Public Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Network News, welcome back. Government has implemented a number of changes to electricity rates effective February 1, 2023, in keeping with its 2023 budget. Beverly Tellisford has details. As a government, we will do what is necessary as long as it is necessary to shield our citizens from the devastating impact of high prices, especially in food, fuel, and other necessities. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell said as he presented the budget statement on Monday, 5th December 2022. The Deacon Mitchell led administration is putting the promises of the 2023 budget into action. As effective February 1st, value-added tax or VAT on electricity consumption has been reduced from 15% to 7.5% for all consumers. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mike Sylvester, spoke with GBN about the changes on Thursday. The first measure has to do with the reduction in the VAT rate on electricity across the board. So for both domestic, uh, commercial and industrial uh, consumers, uh, the rate, as you know, the standard VAT rate is 15%. Um, that has been reduced to 7.5%. So basically halving the rate. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, uh, government has reintroduced uh, the EVL um, and the VAT. Um, on the on, on, on the uh, utilities and so on. Now, you would recall when the 21, 2022 budget was, uh, was announced, uh, the government took some measures to provide relief uh, by, first of all, implementing a 25% reduction on the non-fuel uh, rate. Um, there was also an increase in the threshold where uh, the VAT was exempted up to 500 kilowatt hour uh, per consu uh, in consumption for domestic uh, uh, um, um, consumers, and also an increase up to 500 uh, kilowatt hour for the environmental levy. Just to expand a little further, so if you if you consume between uh, 100 and uh, 150, you pay a five dollar that's a five dollar EVL charge. Yeah, if you consume beyond that. Um, you pay a $10 EVL charge. It's a flat rate. Sylvester explained another relief measure. A $10 government subsidy for eligible electricity customers has also been implemented. Uh, government has introduced a subsidy to all persons consuming or all households consuming under 99 kilowatt hour, right? And based on the analysis that we've done um, with respect to the, to the, the, the measures, um, we have about roughly 48,000 households in Grenada. Yeah, um, 21,000 of that consume under 99 kilowatt hour. So it means that 21,000 households would not be affected by any of the measures, except the 10% uh, in the in the 10% um, 10 dollar subsidy. Sorry, that will be added to the bill, right? So if you consume in zero. I, and, and, and I show that there are persons who are, their bill is $4 because they have very little consumption, whatever the case. Um, you're basically getting a $6 credit on your, on your bill. Uh, if you're consuming $10 or your bill is $10, then basically you, you're not paying anything. Among other relief measures, 
Kicking in are the VAT exemption on a new list of items, including sanitary pads, diapers, and a number of oils, 100% concession to both CET and VAT for selective production equipment to support the creative economy and reduce VAT rate on mobile and broadband data from 20% to 15%. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Meanwhile, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance provided clarity on the gazetted date for the implementation of additional taxes on items originally set for February 1. Rina Ped Thomas has been speaking with Mike Sylvester. On the 24th of January 2023, during a post-cabinet briefing, Prime Minister Dickon Mitchell announced that the implementation of additional tax on sugary drinks, alcohol and cigarettes will be pushed back to the 1st of March rather than the 1st of February. He said this is because of the need of additional time to make sure that the items are clearly identified, clearly classified and published, and that there is no ambiguity. Just a few days later, the orders for enforcing the amendments to the various regulations were published in the 27th January 2023 edition of the Government Gazette, outlining that the date of effect will be the 1st of February 2023. Therefore, the question is asked, does this mean that the implementation of the tax on the items was moved back to the 1st of February? GBN spoke to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mike Sylvester, who explains that the March 1st date is still in place. He said that while the amendment was gazetted, there is still other administrative work to be done for the actual implementation of the Act, which should be ready on March 1st. In any policy measure that government um, announced, most of the policy measures, uh, there are a number of things that are required to ensure that the, it is implemented um, properly. So you have, in some cases, legal instruments that you need, um, and then you also have both administrative and technical uh, aspects. So in the case of the EVL, for example, you have to make changes to the ASICUDA system. You have to make changes to the, to the, to the um, tax system and IRD to be able to facilitate the uh, implementation of the tax, right? And then, of course, you need the, the legal aspect, which is the amendment to the existing legislation. Now, I, I, based on the fact that the law has already been approved, um, I don't see a need to go back to Parliament to, to change the commencement date. Um, and so um, we are going forward on that basis, uh, although we have asked the Ministry of Legal Affairs to provide some guidance on that. Sylvester says this is not the first time an act has been passed and implemented at a later date. Hence, there is no need to blow the issue out of proportion. But um, we have had in the past, for example, laws that were passed um, on the books and, and um, took effect at, at a later date. And I can speak to uh, the amendment to the Income Tax Act, for example, to apply a withholding tax on uh, lottery winnings in excess of $10,000. That was uh, enacted in 2014, and, and as of today, that has not been implemented, and we are, in fact, looking to implement that now. Um, what it will mean, though, I, I suspect, in terms of uh, actual implementation, is that government will lose one month of, of revenues. Um, given the fact that we, we is not going to be implemented from the from the actual date of the enactment of the legislation, he noted that there are public complaints of businesses increasing prices on various food items, alcohol, and added sugary drinks. He said this should not be happening and is an illegal act. Because we've heard reports, for example, where basic food items have gone up. Um, and, and this is linked to the fact that government is implementing um, additional taxes or new taxes when, when, when you know that is not that's not the case. So, so we have to we have to look into that. I've heard cases of where, where beer and rum and so on those those prices have gone up, and there is no there is actually no increase in taxes on this item as of today's date. So, so, so it means that if, if uh, businesses are doing that, then they are doing that legally. The exercise tax order 2023, when implemented on March 1st, will cause an increase in the price of alcoholic products such as beer, wine, whiskey, and rubbing alcohol. The value-added tax amendment regulations 2023 will, among other things, see the inclusion of refined cane sugar as a VAT applicable product, and the value-added tax order 2023 will see the removal of several products from the VAT list, such as cooking oil, toothpaste, children and adults' pampers, bathing soap, peas and beans. For GBN News, I am Rina Pet Thomas reporting. 
The newly elected executive of the Grenada Bar Association has taken the decision to embark on public legal education. Christina John is going to tell us about that. Re-elected unopposed, Derek Sylvester is once again president of the Grenada Bar Association for another term. This took place during the GBA's annual general meeting on Tuesday, January 31st, where a new executive was also installed. Having started the process of public legal education in the past year, Sylvester says this will be their main focus going forward using media platforms. We have committed to uh, ensuring that the public is well educated. Public legal education is one of our um, one of the pillars that we intend to embark upon uh, strenuously for the year 2023 so we want to ensure that the citizens fully understand it their rights, they understand the nuances in relation to various aspects of the law, so they could uh, deal with matters with less with less acrimony, and they'd be able to handle them the, the matters amicably and peaceably. As discussions continue surrounding the construction of the Hall of Justice, the GBA president says they will continue to champion the cause for adequate space and overall improvement of the justice system. Absolutely. Well, I met, I met with the Attorney General. In fairness to her, I wrote the Attorney General to have a meeting, and we have engaged her, and she has been extremely receptive. She once was an attorney herself, so she understands the problem that they could face. I believe she even sat as registrar, deputy registrar, sometimes time in the past, you know. So she's aware and they're using the best efforts to ensure that we have a proper court system and, and uh, the House of Justice that should be forthcoming. Coming. But in the interim, what I'm looking forward to is at least having um, some housing facilities where you have multiple accused. Because recently a matter had to be adjourned because we had a six accused. So the, the quantity of, of jurors, you know, would be much more because your challenges are four challenges uh, per, per attorney plus the prosecution. So that's, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a lot of jurors you must have. So the room size must be large enough to accommodate that. The acoustics, uh, person must be able to see each other. He hinted some of their plans and achievements. We intend to launch our website very soon. Um, it's about 90% completed. Uh, last year, we launched our ID cards. So lawyers not, now have ID cards because attorneys had some difficulties when they're moving around, maybe going to the police station, persons who practice criminal or even civil matters. In some regard, you would need um, identification purposes. How do you identify if someone is an attorney? So the ID card would definitely assist. So we have launched that last year. and. More most attorneys um, have now have their, their ID cards. We've also launched uh, the logo. So we have a, a GBA logo. And, and so now our logo is used and our letterhead and our stamps. So, uh, you know, we're, we're on a mission to, we're on a path to do a lot of things. The new executive comprised Derek Sylvester, President, Francis Paul, Vice President, Delaney Edwards, Secretary, and Cherise Noel, Treasurer. Council members include Kadim Shron, Danish Harford, Donika Maxwell, and Alota Maxwell. Christina John, GBN News. One staple in Grenada's national dish can be prepared for consumption in numerous ways, literally. It's time to take a peek through the GBN ISO lens to see what the St. Michael's RC Infant School prepared using breadfruit. A good eye catches all. GBN Isol is brought to you by Clairvision. Life is beautiful if only you can see it. Clairvision Eye Center helps you do just that. We provide expert service, classy eyewear, and cutting edge technology, all with a quality customer experience. See better, feel better, and look better. Meet us today at clairvisiongrenada.com or call 444-0055, WhatsApp 409-0055, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Clairvision Eye Center. Let's see life and the world with a Clairvision. As 
the independence activities ramp up, our ISO submissions continue to be dominated by creative pieces. Featured tonight is a local food exhibition, Everything Breadfruit, put on by a class of the St. Michael's RC Infant School at Woburn. Featured at the event were breadfruit flour, breadfruit bakes, breadfruit punch, breadfruit cake, breadfruit muffin, fried breadfruit, breadfruit chips, roast breadfruit, creamed or mashed breadfruit, breadfruit balls, sautéed breadfruit, breadfruit pie, and even steamed breadfruit. The class also had a green breadfruit, a ripe breadfruit, and a breadfruit tree. Our ISO line is open for your submissions. Send them via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or via our Facebook and Instagram pages. All things breadfruit, talk about that one. Still ahead in network news, parents spent part of their day with their children at the South St. George Government School. We'll talk about that when we come back. Paging all Grenadians at home and in the diaspora to be part of the journey to 50. Reflecting on the past, planning for the future as we get ready to celebrate our 49th anniversary of independence. Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Events to be observed for our 49th anniversary of independence include table tennis tournament at the CSA building, February 3rd and February 4th. Independence Calypso Finals, Sutter's Bus Terminal, 8 p.m. February 3rd, February 4th. Open Water Swimming Competition, Grand Mall Beach at 9 a.m. And the Beach Tennis at Grand Dance Beach from 11 a.m. Also the Independence Boxing Tournament, February 4th, 8 p.m. at the Youth Center, National Independence Church Service, Grenada Trade Center, Sunday, February 5th, 3 p.m. National Colors Day, the Inter-Ministerial Display, and the 49th Cultural Extravaganza, 7 p.m. at the Granville Burst Terminal, February 6th, then the Made in Grenada Expo, Military Parade and Rally, 10 a.m. at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Tuesday, February 7th, Happy 49th, Grenada. Affordable quality products delivered to you via superb service. We are superb distributors, wholesalers and authorized agents for trusted products you know and love. Like Rika Juices, Pure Heaven Products, Bibin Diapers, New Bright Laundry Detergent, Allegra Pasta and more. Contact Superb Distributors at 435-2948 for superb quality and service. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture, nation building and our future. So go out and play. Folks, make it a must. You will see what the National Lottery is doing for us. When you play Big Tree Cash Flow and play with the NLA will support you all the way. Starting September 30th, Monday to Friday, these three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday, Monday, day. WeatherGuard Pro. For every project, there's only one Pro. Television Center students of the St. George's Anglican Junior School were gifted 15 newly published books on Thursday by a Grenadian author. The author, who is a plant expert, says the books can be used to educate students on the different plants in Grenada and around the world. Rina Ped Thomas was in hand for the presentation. 
plant expert and botanist, Dr. Guido Marcel, presented copies of his Grenadian botanical art book, My Little Coloring Book, to students at the St. George's Anglican Junior School on Thursday. The book, he said, is designed for children to color drawings of Grenadian plants, trees, flowers, and fruits. It also contains a plant dictionary and a plant crossword, which will further educate them on the various plants. Dr. Marcel says that after writing three books, he saw the need to write one for the upcoming generation. And I want it to be a kind of outlier in that it's not a classroom book. I want the children to go out in the field, look at the plants, look at the flowers, look at the leaves, you know, be guided, yes. So your classes could be outside. You know, you compare colors, shapes, and beginning to appreciate their functions and uses. Young people must begin to understand that. We find in many cases that people think that all food comes from the supermarket, and that's where it ends. But all the food we eat on planet Earth start with plants, okay? And we must understand and appreciate that. The botanist hopes that his book will encourage the preservation of Grenada's natural resources and promotes patriotism, especially now that Grenada will soon celebrate its 49th anniversary of independence. The students kind of bring it home to the parents, so you, your parents become uh, even more concerned about preservation and conservation and sustainability and seeing the resources we have in Grenada, how we must pleasure and treasure those because we have plants out there that are very valuable. For example, a lot of the bushes don't know that when you go up to like the Granitang area Constantine, there is a plant on the side of the road there that is indigenous, to, only found in Grenada. And the bushes don't know they cut it down. It's only found in Grenada. It's indigenous to Grenada. So that's the kind of, you know, over knowledge I would like people to start having the idea for. Dr. Marcel donated 15 books, each with a box of crayon, to the junior school. During his presentation, he also took the time out to educate the students about bananas. Red bananas, they are pink bananas, and they are also blue bananas. Okay. The banana plant is actually a herb. For something to be a tree, it must have in wood. To be a tree, you must have in wood. So the banana plant is actually a herb. The plant expert will make his second presentation on the 6th of February at the St. Paul's Government School. The alma mater of the managing director of the book's publisher, Dr. Francis Alexis. A botanist and chemist, Dr. Guido Marcel, owns and operates Dr. G's garden in St. Andrew, being fully aware of all the plants that are around, including the weeds. He initiated several different farming concepts, utilizing a variety of agronomic practices. For GBN News, I am Rina Pet Thomas reporting. Parents and guardians popped into the South St. George Government School on Thursday as they joined their children for a morning of fun activities. Beverly Telesford was part of the mix and enjoyed some of the bonding moments there. When parents send their children off to school on mornings, they have little to no idea of what the day would be like for the students. The parents and guardians of students of the South St. George Government School got a first-hand experience in the classroom on Thursday during the school's Bring a Parent to School Day. Parents participated in a number of classroom activities and interactive sessions, some coinciding with independent celebrations, including drawing and painting the national flag. Raquel Tellisford, a Grade 2 teacher and a teacher's representative on the Parent Teacher Association said the initiative was planned by parents on the new PTA. Well, this week we would have launched our PTA Awareness Week, and today is Bring a Parent to School Day. So, this morning we had parents, mommy and daddies, coming in with their children and engaging with them in the classroom. At 8 30 this morning, the kindergartens, grade 1, and grade tools, they had their own activity, the parents, the turnout was amazing. We had a lot of daddies here. Um, it was a joy to see the, the smiles on the children's faces when they saw daddy walking in and mommy walking in. Um, we saw a few tears this morning and we love to see the participation of the parents. 
Talisford said the aim was to involve all of the parents in the activities of the PTA and the school lives of their children. First of all, our PTA executive is new. They were established um, late last year. And it's a group of vibrant parents that's on the executive, and they just wanted to expand the reach. It's not just them, it's um, all parents have to be involved. And they came up with this wonderful initiative to involve parents in the lives of their children. The event was dominated by fathers. One of the fathers said the initiative is one that should be implemented across Grenada. Today was quite a good example for all schools should do this. You know, it's, it's, it's of course, busy schedules, but it's nice that we're able to interact with our kids on this level. We appreciate the initiative you took and the school to do such a thing because it's it's not it's not ordinary. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. it. Was fun. Many times I want to drop what I'm doing and come to school instead. <laughs> and this is this is one of the examples. So we really appreciate the effort that went in to do this. It's nice to see that a lot of teachers, a lot of parents turned up. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Ryan John captures made in five wicket hall. The sports news is next. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. When you need your prescription filled or you require non-prescribed medication, supplements, or all your personal needs, visit Gittins Healthcare at locations on Wall Street Grand Dance, Victoria Street Brendan, and Central Deputy Street Wall. Gittins Healthcare aims to provide an exceptional personalized pharmacy experience. Additionally, children under 5 and adults 55 years and over will enjoy 10% discount on purchases of $20 and over on prescription medication. Stop selling for less. Visit Kittens Healthcare, where your health is our priority. Rep your colors. Hot 98 presents the 473 Colors Bot Ride. Gwendolyn Saturday, February 4. Get your tickets now at gotofem.com for only $65. Food included. Board in time 7 p.m. The boat sails at 7.30. Music on board by the Hot 98 DJs plus other guest DJs. Baby, calm down, calm down. Rep your colors on the boat. Cause this one here is gonna be epic. Lock the date. Saturday, February 4, Hot 98. 73 colors boat ride. Don't you miss this. level of convenience and comfort awaits you when you shop at Rise and Shine Supermarket and Hardware Supplies, Griffin Lane, Grenville. Convenient, because we are open Sunday to Sunday. We're even at your service on public holidays. Comfort, because we are easily accessible to the physically challenged. Free Wi-Fi is available while you shop, and bags come at no charge. Everyday low prices and excellent customer care. Adequate parking available. We supply everything you can possibly think of. Family and home supplies, fresh meat, vegetables, and personal care products. All brands of cooking gas at affordable prices. You can send in your order, have it pulled, or pick up express. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture, nation building, and our future. So go out and play 
folks make it a must. You will see what the national lottery is doing for us. When you play big tree, cash flow and play with the NLA will support you all the way. Starting September 30th, Monday to Friday, these three games will be drawn mid morning, 9 45 a.m., midday, 12 45 p.m., and evenings, 7 45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday, Monday, Sporting fans, good evening. Grenadian Ryan John on day two of the West Indies Championship match, Windward Islands Volcanoes against Trinidad and Tobago, had an excellent spell of bowling. John, with the ball, had bowled seven consecutive maidens overs. He finished day two on 14.1 overs, nine maidens, 18 runs, and five wickets. The young bowler had this to say about his achievement. I mean, no place better to do it than home. I mean, it's, it's my first um, 5 4 for in professional cricket, and I must say thanks to God Almighty and persons that believe in me. And um, for all the hard work, I mean, it, it, it has been showing for a while, and I'm just grateful. John, who replaced Nicholas Redhead at the last minute, says that it will be all about consistency for him in order to continue to succeed that we're doing very very well it's just that we need to be very circumspect and put ourselves in a position where we can win the match um, yes um, I don't really want to look too far ahead um, yes I've, I've been doing well it's just about consistency and keep doing the good things Brian John. Well, today saw the semi-final matches in the Subway Secondary School basketball competition being played, at, being played in the female division. Communications Officer in the Ministry of Sports, Corrine Moraine Alexander, gives us an update on all the results. Here are the results from the Subway Secondary School's basketball tournament, male quarterfinals held on Wednesday, 1st of February, 2023. At the golf court, McDonald College played against Wesley College. McDonald College scored 87 points, Wesley College 44. Game MVP Michael Checkley of Wesley College with 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 block shots. The Granville Secondary School versus Happy Hill Secondary School game was not played due to the absence of Happy Hill Secondary School, which resulted in GSS automatically being in the semifinals. Friday, 3rd February is the males semi-finals. Game 1, GBSS versus McDonald College at 2 p.m., followed by Game 2, Presentation Brothers College versus Grenville Secondary School. Today, the females division semi-finals were held with GSS versus McDonald College at Grenville and St. Joseph's Convent St. George's versus Anglican High School on the Carnage. The female finals are on Monday, February 6th, and the male finals are on Wednesday, February February 8, 2023. This has been your secondary school's basketball update. I am Karine Moraine Alexander reporting. Thank you very much. West Indies selection panel has announced a 15-member West Indies women's squad for the upcoming ICC Women's T20 World Cup in South Africa. The squad sees the inclusion of three under-19 uprising players who recently concluded the under-19 World Cup. More in this report. The West Indies squad features six players who became world champions in 2016. Haley Matthews, Shemaine Campbell, Stephanie Taylor, Shamelia Connell, Shakira Selman and Afi Fletcher with Matthews as captain. Additionally, wicketkeeper batter Shemaine Campbell has been named as vice captain with experienced all-rounder Stephanie Taylor named in the squad subject to a final fitness assessment. On the 19 World Cup standout Zyla James, Trishan Holder and Janaba Joseph have been given the opportunity to step into roles of importance. The full 
squad reads Haley Matthews, Captain, Shamin Campbell, Vice Captain, Aliyah Alain, Shamilia Connell, Afi Fletcher, Shabika Gajnabi, Chanel Henry, Trishan Holder, Zaida James, Janaba Joseph, Shadi Nation, Karishma Ramharak, Shakira Selman, Stephanie Taylor, and Rashada Williams. The West Indies have been drawn in Group 2 alongside England, India, Pakistan, and Ireland, and will travel to Cape Town on Friday, 3rd February, ahead of the start of the tournament, which will begin on Friday, 10th February, with hosts South Africa taking on Sri Lanka. Right. Charges of attempted rape and assault have been dropped against Manchester United footballer Mason Greenwood. The 21-year-old was arrested in January 2022 amid allegations surrounding images and videos. He was later charged with attempted rape, controlling and coercive behavior and assault. The Krong Prosecution Service said the charges were discontinued after key witnesses withdrew their involvement. Within hours of the allegations, surfacing at the beginning of 2022. The forward, who has made one appearance for England, was suspended from playing or training with the Old Trafford Club. That's the sports news for the moment. Protesters took to the streets on Wednesday morning to protest the manner in which police officers arrest a drug suspect at Buxton on the east coast of Demerara. More details in this report. Upset over the way agents of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit carried out their pursuit of a drug suspect, unrest erupted at Buxton and the east coast of Demerara Wednesday morning. The unrest disrupted traffic for several hours as tires and a truck burned on the main access road. Nightly News understands that Kanu Ranks, in their bid to apprehend a fleeing suspect, opened fire and arrested a man allegedly with a quantity of marijuana in his possession. The car, which the suspect was driving ended up in a trench. Residents of Buxton are also demanding that the drug suspect be released from custody. Um, at another level, we are collaborating with the Custom anti narcotic Unit as it relates to the Akan investigation to be conducted by the National Police as it relates to this incident. You get any reports that some homes were shattered by bullets? Or Initially, I was told by a few residents on my arrival here, I'm waiting at the end of this operation to afford the engagement. So it will take the engagement of the leaders to clear the road? I'm still speaking to them. We don't want to use uh, some amount of excessive force. We, there are certain things that could be dealt with in a different manner. Meanwhile, this man's truck was set on fire. He explained that he was on his way to Mahaika after offloading rice when several protesters, who had their faces covered, swarmed him. Police, ranks from the Ghana Defense Force and ranks from the Ghana Fire Service managed to reopen the roadway around 15.30 hours Wednesday, while the Ministry of Home Affairs appealed to the protesters to desist from blocking the roadways. The government of Antigua has reaffirmed its commitment to the build-out of a performing arts centre at the former Deluxe Cinema in St. John's. Prime Minister Gaston Brown provided a recent update as he outlined a major push to drive the growth in the orange economy. More in this report. Prime Minister Honourable Gaston Brown says plans are on the way for a local performing centre. 2022 saw Caribbean stakeholders come together to discuss the development and sustenance of the creative industries. PM Brown shared recently on Point FM's Brown and Brown show his desire to see a significant boost for this aspect of the orange economy. That's an area that I personally 
will be paying some attention to along with the minister to support him to make more facilities available to our artists, our artisans. So, for example, that deluxe building. We have already done the designs, we have done the drawings, mm -hmm. and um, we hope to maybe by about the second quarter of this year raise the necessary funding so that we can commence the, um, let's say, repurposing of that building. The centre is expected to have a capacity of around 1,000 seats for use by local groups and also visiting artists. This promise was set out in the ABLP's manifesto published earlier this year and sets the centre out as a space for plays, readings and other events. Prime Minister Brown says to guarantee success, it will be linked to the country's main revenue-earning industry. I mean, it has to be linked to our tourism, and it's also providing um, employment opportunities for artisans. So, for example, you, you can have a soca production as an example. It provides work for soca artists. And here you have this facility in which you're really attracting tourists, not only the um, cruise tourists, but overnight tourists as well. And the locals, your locals also need to be entertained. The head of government explained the intention is not only to ensure an increase in economic activity, but also to develop local talent and to prepare them to grace stages abroad. Further feel a U.S. high school curriculum on African-American history has been revised after conservative critics complained it amounted to woke indoctrination. The rest in this report. The College Board has made changes to the AP African American Studies course more than a week after Governor DeSantis and the Florida Department of Education rejected it, saying it lacks educational value and violates state law. The state had concerns over topics including intersectionality and activism, black queer studies, and movements for black lives. The newly revised syllabus eliminates authors like Kimberly Crenshaw, Roderick Ferguson, and Bell Hooks. The state specifically citing each of those authors in their concerns, for example, saying Kimberly Crenshaw, quote, is the co-editor of critical race theory. Also, topics like movements for black lives and black queer studies are not found in the new coursework. Governor Ron DeSantis was asked about the new framework at a news conference in Tallahassee Wednesday morning. And I wanted to get your opinion of the new framework that we've seen from the American, the African American AP course that was released today. I don't know if you've had a chance to review it or if... I haven't seen it, so I'll have to get back to you on that. News 6 spoke with Professor Dr. Robert Patterson of Georgetown University, who sits on the development board, and he says changes to the course were already in the works before the state came out with their concerns. That letter really didn't have much bearing on the changes that was made, if any at all. And so, so, so for instance, as, as you can see from the process I've already described, there were already changes in, in progress for Unit 4. Stay with us. We'll remind you of the headlines after this. is the Grenada Broadcasting Network. A reminder of the headlines, Chad David and Cyril Joseph sentenced to 19 years behind bars. Michael McQueen trial delayed in the Franklin St. Paul murder trial. DPP seeks Privy Council leave to appeal Alexander Clark's case. Government attempts to cushion the effects of high fuel prices with new changes in charges for electricity. In around the globe regionally, plans advance for performing arts center in Antigua. Internationally, African American studies syllabus changed at a high school in the U.S. Plus in the sports news, Grenadian Ryan John captures maiden five-wicket haul. If you missed any part of this newscast, the repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online, gbn.gd, on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Ken Roy-Batisse. That's all from us for now. Have a good night.